Now, welcome back to Property Matters on Dublin South FM with myself, Carol Tallon. You can contact us on Twitter at iPropertyRadio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com. Now, I'm now joined by James Morris Manuel, Managing Director and Vice President of Europe, Middle East and Africa at Matterport. James, thank you so much for being with us in what is a very busy week for Matterport. Hi, Carol. Yeah, it's been a super exciting week here at Matterport. And thank you very much for having me on the show. No, I'm delighted. So look, first of all, because Matterport has been in the news quite a lot this week, you might just uh, maybe talk us very briefly through the activity that's happening. And by the way, I'm aware that it's still ongoing. So maybe share an update, um, share an update where you can. Uh, Absolutely. So I mean, the headline news is that uh, Matterport uh, was super excited to announce this partnership uh, with Gore's group to take Matterport public. The transaction you know, will give Matterport the opportunity to really fuel the full capacity and potential of the company's growth. And um, you know, the proceeds of the transaction, Matterport's gonna be able to like, scale up our enterprise business um, to fuel adoption across all of sort of real estate, all the real estate verticals. And it will also help us fuel our international growth. So you know, we're a very large business in the US, but we have a very fast scaling uh, team and business in EMEA as well as in APAC in Singapore. So, Excellent. Well, look, that, that's fantastic to watch. Obviously, through PropTech Ireland, we've been watching with interest over the last number of years um, as PropTechs, there aren't that many PropTechs going uh, through to IPO and going through this SPAC model um, is a really interesting one to watch. So, I know that things are still ongoing. We won't get into it too much, um, but I think it's a really interesting stage. We'll definitely be be watching it closely and best of luck to all the team there. Uh, I'm sure that um, with that excitement comes a certain amount of stress as well. So so, uh, best of luck to the team there. But just in terms of um, Matterport's success, I mean, now Matterport is a household name, but how, how old is the company? When was the company first established? So the company's been running for 10 years. And what's been great is we are, you know, definitely the leader in this space. And, you know, with the recent announcement, it's just going to help us fuel that leadership position uh, and continue to grow the business. But just maybe explain to people, um, our audience uh, tends to come from the planning, construction, property and prop tech sectors, you know, taking in engineering and you know, we're seeing Matterport being used maybe in a different way now than than we might have expected four and five years ago. So maybe talk us through some of the core services. Absolutely. So the, I think the best way to think about Matterport today is as, you know, a spatial data company that's really turning a building into data. So we create a three-dimensional digital twin of any building that you can access, explore, manage uh, from any device anywhere. And you know, by making every space more kind of valuable and accessible, it really takes helps take the property industry, which is traditionally a very analog industry, and helps transition this industry online. Um, and in terms of how it can be applied you know, around 50% of our user base is in the residential real estate market. Um, And then the other 50% is made up of new verticals that we're actively uh, going after right now. So some other use cases that are are very interesting is architecture, being able to capture what's there now. So the architect can take a digital twin and start to design their next uh, the next phase of refurbishment or the next model of that property um, one of the other big verticals for us is construction and we we know that construction uh, most construction sites reserve about 10 percent of the cost for snagging at the end of the construction process and matterport can very simply be used to reduce that snagging process so by capturing on a, a weekly basis you can capture the job site at the end of each phase. And so you can catch uh, snagging issues earlier, but you can also see who's accountable for those snagging issues. So for example, someone breaks the water pipe, you can see between the models, ah, the water pipe broke, broke on this week. And the only person was in this week was actually the electrician. 
the air conditioning people hadn't come in yet. So you really know how to address the snagging and see who, who created the issue, if that's the way, uh, if that's something that you need to see. So architecture, construction, we're seeing a lot for facilities management at the moment as well, being able to really see what's in the portfolio, but also what's inside the data. So one of the uh, things we're working on now is object recognition for different items within the property. So if, you're, if we're in a residential home, we can see how many doors are in this property. How many windows are in this property? What's the square footage of the floor? But what's the square footage of the walls? Um, how many light bulbs are in this property so that you can plan for upgrades? So you can really, and we call this the building IQ, and it's really giving facility managers the ability to see with more transparency what's in the portfolio so they can uh, manage more effectively. Um, okay, thank you, James. That's a really interesting one because obviously... Uh, Matt Port would be probably best known for the work in the residential side. Um, so it's really interesting to hear. It makes absolute sense in terms of the architecture side. I mean, digital twins, you know, this is this is a concept that's been around for a while. But I think the the significance is just being recognized now by the industry and not just by the industry, but by insurers and by funders and by all of these other people who would have had to. Uh, go through a whole supply chain in order to get the same information, to provide the same protections, to understand the values um, in as tangible a way. So it's, it's a really interesting one. But I'm very aware that you're coming into quite a traditional marketplace. Um, so how has that transition been? Um, so say, for example, coming in on the construction side and snagging. Um, you know, snagging is one of those things that's seen as has to be done, you know, a, a cost that's going to be accrued. And if you come in to a traditional um, contractor and says, say that we can we can uh, um, eliminate this, how convinced are they? Do they understand the need for it? Are they convinced that your software can do that? Yeah, um, we have, well, there's a lot of uh, construction companies that are using us today. And uh, Multivista, which is one of the large construction documentation companies, use Matterport extensively to, to help for this particular, this particular piece of the construction process. And it goes all the way through. I think one of the things you touched on, which was really nice, is we talk a lot about the property life cycle. And, you know, the, the media can be used the whole way through from, you know, architectural uh, design to the construction phase to the sales phase. And then if you're selling it to an investor, they might then rent it. And again, how do you insure it? You know, what did the property look like potentially before it burned down? So what's lovely about the Matterport Media is it can really be a thread through the whole property life cycle and, uh, and can be used at many different phases. Yeah, so. I, I think it's a really good way to think about the digital twin of a building is that it is another real asset. Um, you know that that it's so it, it it's an asset in and of itself. I, I'm aware that you know your your work remit um, takes you across Europe, Middle East, Africa. So you're in a good position, maybe to to evaluate where we are on the tech spectrum. And look, this is a question I tend to ask almost everybody that that comes on to the show because I'm I'm genuinely interested. You know, I'm so aware that when we're uh, dealing with um, the leaders in tech adoption in the industry, you know, there, there's a danger of us thinking that the the industry has moved on more than it has. Um, similarly, when we see the government uh, mobilise to put in place strategies that really support digital build and, and all manner of innovations and sustainability um, goals for the built environment, it can make us think that Ireland is perhaps in a more leading position that, than it actually is. Looking across the built environment, you know, right across Europe, uh, Middle East and Africa, because you're kind of uniquely in a position to do that. Where are you seeing, where are you seeing kind of the, the tech leaders in this space? So, I mean, that's a broad question. The... The simple, I think the simple headline 
you know, is the value of the media. So if we talk about traditional residential real estate uh, for sales, leasing and marketing purposes, you know, we've got case study that shows houses with a digital twin, a Matterport digital twin, sell 30% faster. Um, and not only do they sell 30% faster, we also have case study that shows they sell for 10% higher price. So, you know, that's a value that the industry just, in my opinion, just can't ignore. The leaders in the market um, obviously driving the way. So, you know, when we talk about commercial real estate, just to touch on it for a second, Cushman and Wakefield, Jones Lang LaSalle, CBRE, Colliers, you know, all four of the big commercial real estate companies use Matterport extensively on the portfolio. Uh, in Ireland specifically, Daft, which uh, has been around for you know, 20, 30 years, has got Matter Matterport integrated deeply in the website because they know their innovative agents or forward thinking agents want to be able to deliver that level of transparency to the consumer base. So we're seeing, we're, and I think that's a good example of you know, a very strong influential portal recognizing that the Matterport digital twin is vital to the future of how properties are, are represented uh, in Ireland. So we're seeing a lot of adoption. I think the other part is most companies have definitely recognized now that the way they've done business in the last 10 years will never be the same. And it will not be the same in the next 10 years. So they've all got a level of digital strategy in place of how they're going to take their business forward. Um, and if they don't, they need to do that immediately. Uh, so I think they've all got a bit of a digital strategy in place of how they're going to move the business forward. I think you know, Matterport is a big piece of, of that uh, digitalization strategy. And COVID... I think really when COVID came in the last 12 months, that put a lot of pressure on the uh, residential real estate industry to really get serious about some of these changes. Uh, and, and we see it, we've seen it time and time again in, in you know, recessionary world where, you know, margins get thinner, you know, the market gets a bit tighter and companies have to take, take a step back, take a moment for introspection and think, how am I going to do business going forward? How can I cut cost? How can I be more time sensitive? How can I be more efficient with my processes? And tech is really, you know, a big answer to the majority of those questions. Mm -hmm. So I think most companies had a digital strategy in place uh, of how they're going to move forward. But I think COVID really exacerbated that and has forced the subject. And uh, now I think most companies are moving forward with a view that, you know, digital twins and a Matterport model is going to be a core part of how they uh they go to market in the future. Yeah, I, and I think that's an interesting one. You know, you identified um, really the core part there is creating value that the industry can't ignore because obviously that's a really good way to overcome resistance to innovation or te technology of any sort. Um, what I'm really interested to know, I mean, can you separate maybe some of the trends that were already well in play prior to COVID um, because, you know, we've heard it said, and of course, there's a huge amount of truth in it, that um, the pandemic has accelerated some of the, you know, many of the trends that were already in place. But since February, March 2020, you know, are you seeing any new trends maybe that are feeding into potential new verticals, um, th but that came about on thought of the pandemic? So I, I think there's two, there's two ways to answer that question. Uh, the first is there's not many, we're not seeing new trends when it comes to residential real estate. We're seeing a little bit more of an accelerated trend, but the, the main trends were there because the value you can't ignore. Um, so as COVID has come in, yes, it's increased adoption uh, a little bit, but actually it's kind of just got the, the, the middle of the market and the late adopters to really start to pay attention faster. But the actual implementation of what they're doing hasn't really changed. I think if the, the trends where we have seen change due to COVID is, you know, back to school. You know, we never thought we'd be in a world where, you know, schools had to email all their you know, parents and say, this is how we're going to bring your child into a COVID safe school. 
And by the way, here's a Matterport model of how we're going to set up the school and set up the classrooms and one way walk flows and sanitization stations. And so that's I mean, that's something that was a a market that was never there, which has appeared because of COVID. And are schools actually doing that? I haven't come across that at all. That's a really interesting one. And I I, I think it's amazing, actually, Uh, you know, now that you now now that you tell me about it, uh, I've never heard of it. I think it's a great idea. But how great would that be for, um, you know, for kids moving schools, for kids just starting school for the first time? You know, these are great ways to reduce anxiety as well. There are just so many potential applications. But are, 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 do you know off the top of your head, are any schools in Ireland doing that? Off the top of my head, I can't give you an answer, but I'm sure there will be. It's it's not a it's not a niche trend. It's a fairly a fairly big trend because you know schools are being really held accountable and they've got to communicate to their parents in the clearest way possible, which is very hard in in the you know in the, in the new world. So there will definitely be schools in Ireland who are doing this. Um, we, we've seen schools across the whole world doing it. So. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to talk to some of my uh, school teacher and principal friends about that because I think that's a really interesting one. But I, I see it having application far beyond the pandemic. Actually, I, I think it's a great idea. And before we finish up, obviously, we touched on um, you know the, the huge changes going on at Matchport at the moment, which are very exciting. Uh, but in terms of innovation, you know, is, is there anything kind of coming down the track? What what are your expectations for twenty twenty one? So lots, I mean, lots of expectations for 2021. Um, We think that this is going to be, you know, the best year we've had as a company. Uh, We're super excited with the the new announcement. And it's just going to, you know, fuel our our growth. You know, as we kind of invented this category uh, for the built world of, of digital twins, it's really how can we lean in? How can we grow as fast as possible? Um, and one of the big things uh, that's on the map is something called Cortex, which is our artificial intelligence and machine learning engine. And giving, giving that more research and development for us to really recognize objects. So at the moment, we can do a lot of this already, but how do we take it to the next level is, is the question here. So for example, uh, the artificial intelligence engine now, because we have for uh, 4.4 million uh, properties captured on the Matterport platform. We both have the 2D data and the 3D data. So you can imagine that scene, a bedroom numerous times from different angles in different properties. So now when a property goes through uh, the Matterport system, we can identify and label, this is the bedroom because it has a square shaped object. You know, I'm simplifying, oversimplifying a lot, but, so our artificial intelligence engine is really going to go to a next level of some of the things that it's capable of doing. Um, the other piece that we're very focused on is the platform itself and plugging in different kinds of platform providers, whether it's virtual staging um, or special uh, other functionality that can be that can sit on top of the 3D data. So expanding our platform partners is a, is a big part as well. Exciting time, James. That, that's great to hear. Thank you so much for being with us today. That was James Morris Manuel, Managing Director and Vice President of Europe, Middle East, Africa at Matterport. That's it from us this week. Thank you for listening into Property Matters on Dublin South FM. You can get in touch with the show via social media and, of course, emailing hello at ipropertyradio.com. Also, my thanks to Peter Rice on Sound and show producer Katie Tallon of Hear Me Roar Media. We're back at the same time next week from myself, Carol Talon, and all the team here. Stay safe.